Welcome to Pawpaw TV. Today we present an original program, One on One with Jerry McLaughlin. He discusses his life's work with Richard Lund. Today's program is brought to you by Gojis.com. Gojis.com. Your eyes will love you. This material is for educational purposes only. If you are sick, see a doctor. Maybe you can find one that speaks herbal medicine. And now, one on one with Jerry McLaughlin. Well, now, so some people are taking the product. The the product has been manufactured and uh, right. it's in the marketplace uh, since March of uh, 2003, I believe. Right. We started marketing at, at the, the company Nature Sunshine Products, mm -hmm. and uh, it required a lot of work. Uh, took it took me four years to get it marketed as a supplement, as a dietary supplement. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's an extract, mm -hmm. not the pure compounds. So, mm -hmm. and it just didn't make sense to me in skinning this cat a different way mm -hmm. to go with uh, pure compounds as drugs. Mm -hmm. Why not just treat it as a botanical product, which is a mixture of all these compounds in the same concentrations that nature creates them. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's what we did. We, we made the extract. We standardized it with the brine shrimp test. We also Standardize it chemically with high performance liquid chromatography and mass spectrometry is followed by mass spectrometry. Mm -hmm. So we make sure that the compounds are there and that they're there in the right concentrations and we can make the consistency from lot to lot. So we always have the same effect of a given capsule. I recently heard uh, Dr. Farnsworth from University of Illinois in Chicago yes. say that uh, it was important to standardize both chemically and biologically and at that time, I think he was unaware that pawpaw was standardized that way, and he made the statement that there were no compounds that in the United States that were botanicals that were sold being standardized that way. No, he's wrong. So this is the first one, probably. Actually, we were we were selling pawpaw since night since 2001 in a standardized form in a shampoo. Oh, okay. Yeah, because remember I said it killed insects? That's right. That's so right. we developed it initially in the shampoo to kill head lice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it works extremely well for mm -hmm. killing head lice and other pests. So, yeah, we had that since, since 2001. But internally, for ingestion, possibly pawpaw is the first one that's biologically standardized as a supplement, a botanical supplement in the United States, right? Mm -hmm. But I've, I've used the brine shrimp and screened, I think initially we screened like 19 botanical extracts and 16 of the 19 botanical extracts kill the brine shrimp. Oh. So we could actually use the brine shrimp assay to standardize botanicals, many of them at least, uh, if you choose to do that. It, it, it's extremely uh, uh, inexpensive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the problem is the labor that's involved. And, in the botanical industry, it's so competitive today that people just don't choose to uh, to make their product the best. Mm. You know, they would rather just go ahead and market it on the basis of a marker compound, which may or may not be the active material. In, in most cases, it's not, mm. and certainly it's not the single active material. Most plants have a mixture. Mm -hmm. of active compounds, and that fact is ignored by many people who just want to assay for marker compounds. I suppose until they know for sure which ones are, are the actives that they right. would be presumptive to. Uh, you have to do activity-directed fractionation, like we did with the pawpaw. You take every fraction off a chromatography column and you assay it with the bioassay. Mm -hmm. Those that are inactive, we throw out. Mm -hmm. Forget it. I don't care if it crystallizes on you. Forget it. We don't care what that is. Mm -hmm. We only go with the active fractions and we boil them down until we get it down to the active compounds. Mm -hmm. And then you prove their structures. Mm -hmm. So we've got uh, Papa ready for use with people. Right. And how did you prepare from the, from the trees? How did you prepare the right product and test it before you put it with people? Right. There are a lot of pitfalls in this. It's like every time we did something, we'd mess up and have to start over again. Uh, first, I wanted, I was initially collecting the bark of the tree, mm -hmm. and we found that the bark uh, 
worked, but then we collected a bunch of it, bark and twigs, in November of one year, and we found out that it didn't work. Mm -hmm. So then we back, went back and collected twigs from the same tree for one year, each mm -hmm. month. And guess what? There's a huge peak in biological activity in the months of May and June. Mm -hmm. So we have to collect the material in May and June. Mm -hmm. in order. That's when the plant has the highest concentrations of these compounds in the twigs. Mm -hmm. uh, we did a whole experiment to show which plant part was the most potent, mm -hmm. and it was the twigs, actually. And the little twigs that are a quarter of an inch and less are the best, but commercially we have them collected a half inch and less mm -hmm. for the small twigs. And actually this year, uh, 100 and 110,000 pounds of twigs were collected mm -hmm. of pawpaw for us to make the extract and make the products. So we, we figured that out, and we had to figure out the best way to extract it, the most efficient way. Mm -hmm and we've got that figured out. Mm -hmm. And again, we, we monitor three times with this brine shrimp test mm -hmm. and the processing of the extract to make sure that the, the, final, the final assays with the final product, make sure that it's up to par biologically. Is there anything in the raw material that you were concerned about that you wanted to remove? Right, in the, uh, in the literature, in the Lancet, that's a medical journal from England back in 1999, there was a paper that came out that graviola had something that, that's called guanabana or uh, soursop. That one and, and uh, the custard apple from the tropics, those are cousins of pawpaw in the Ananaceae family, that, that those things possibly were linked to Parkinsonism mm -hmm. from long-term consumption mm -hmm. of teas and juices of these things. Now, I, I've checked with people who've eaten pawpaws all their lives and their studies are rock, you mm -hmm. know, so Parkinsonism. Yeah. But at any rate, uh, they attributed the possible Parkinsonian effects to some alkaloids. So in our extraction procedure, we extract initially with water. Mm -hmm. The alkaloids are water-soluble mm -hmm. as the salts, and we thus, you know, do four extractions with water and eliminate any possible alkaloids that might cause some trouble in this way. And uh, that's an expensive step, actually, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, it's difficult then to get rid of the water. Mm -hmm. That's caused us a lot of headaches, but we, we're working on those things. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it's extracted from there to uh, a relatively... Uh, right, then we go with an ethanol extract and mm -hmm. then take the ethanol residue and it's dried onto a powdered cellulose mm -hmm. material, biologically evaluated, which allows us then to determine how much has to go per capsule, mm -hmm. and then put in the capsule form. So when a person buys the capsule, they can be rest assured that what they're going to get will work the same way it did last time. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. That's right.